Hello, and welcome to LSET Tech Bite. Today, we're going to dive into creating a simple yet effective product filter using HTML, CSSS, and JavaScript. By the end of this tutorial, you'll be equipped with the skills to enhance your web projects with interactive filtering functionality. So, let's get started. First up, we have our HTML structure. This code lays the foundation for our product filter interface. We start with the standard HTML document structure, specifying the language and setting the viewport for responsive design. Here, we have a search input field where users can type keywords to search for specific product. Then, we have a series of buttons for filtering products based on categories such as topware, bottomware, jackets, and watches. We've also linked an external style sheet named style.css to handle the visual presentation of our filter. Finally, we have the JavaScript file where all the magic happens. Now it's time to dive into the CSS styling to make our filter visually appealing. First, we're setting some basic styling rules for all elements using the universal selector. We're removing any default padding, margin, borders, and outlines, and ensuring that all elements adhere to the box model with box sizing border box. Next, we're defining the overall look of the body by setting its background color to a soothing shade of grayish cayenne. Moving on, we have the wrapper class, which defines the styling for our main content container. We're centering it on the page both horizontally and vertically using Flexbox. Here, we're styling the search container where users can input their search queries. We're setting it to take up 50% of the width, centering it on the page, and adding a subtle border bottom to the input field. Notice how we've defined the input field to have a transparent background and a border bottom that changes color when it's in focus. Now let's talk about those filter buttons. We're using Flexbox once again to arrange the filter buttons horizontally with a bit of spacing between them. Each button has a transparent background with white text, making them easy to spot. We've defined a common style for all buttons with the button value class, giving them some padding, rounded corners, and a hover effect. And finally, we have the styling for our product display area. We're using CSS Grid to arrange the product cards in a neat grid layout with three columns. Each card has a white background, subtle padding, and a soft shadow to create a sense of depth. In the Image Container class, we center the image inside, set a fixed width and height. The images themselves are set to fit within their container without stretching. The container class is used inside each card to add padding at the top and set text color. We style the headings and subheadings with different font weights and sizes to differentiate product details. And there you have it. With these CSS styles, our product filter interface is now looking sleek and user-friendly. Now we're going to write some JavaScript code to make our product filter interactive and dynamic. Let's get started. First up, we have our product object, which contains an array of product data, including the product name, category, price, and image. Next, we're using a for loop to iterate over each product in the data array and dynamically create HTML elements for each product card. For each product, we're creating a div element with the class card and adding it to our product grid. Inside each card, we have an image container, an image element, and details like the product name and price. Now let's talk about the filter product function. This function is responsible for filtering products based on the selected category. When a user clicks on one of the filter buttons, it adds the active class to that button and shows or hides product cards accordingly. If the selected category is all, it removes the hide class from all product cards, displaying all products. Otherwise, it checks each card's category and hides those that don't match the selected category. And finally, we have the event listener for the search button. When a user enters a search query and clicks the search button, this function filters the product cards based on the entered text. It checks each product name for a match and shows or hides the corresponding card.
And there you have it. With the JavaScript functionality in place, our product filter is now complete. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more tutorials. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.